to Wine and Wellness Wednesday. I am Lindsay Brantley. I'm the founder of Camellia Elise and the Camellia Elise Academy. And yes, wine and wellness is back. Just as I promised, I took a two week break from wine and wellness and I am back. So, wanted to give you guys a quick update or two and then I'm gonna go into this week's self care topic. So um, first and foremost, um, there are no words that I could say. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of you. There are so many of you guys that have, you know, sent me flowers, sent me messages, encouraging words. Um, I just thank you so much for those things. And I'm actually playing one of my mom's favorite songs. So It's All Right by Shantae Moore is a beautiful song. And it is extremely hard for me, but um, the last gift that my mom bought me was this shirt. And I was not able to wear it um, when she could see it. So I'm wearing it tonight, you know, so that each and every one of you guys can see it. Um, and it's very, very hard knowing that my biggest fan is not watching. She's not watching live, but she is watching live. So, um I just first wanted to, you know, say thank you guys so much for your support um, during this difficult time, like everything that I've been going through. I just appreciate all the kind words and the gestures and everything that you guys have done. Um, so quick update, just so that you guys know, I will be back doing, um, thank you so much guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I will be back doing Wine and Wellness Wednesday every week like I have been and um we're gonna have fun okay so this week though i picked a topic that of course is very near and dear to my heart and i i do want to clarify this by saying some of you guys maybe don't know didn't catch the last wine and wellness wednesday but um i did lose my mom about two weeks ago and so i decided to take a couple weeks off to take care of myself and so now um this week's topic i actually want to talk about self-care while grieving Okay, because um, a lot of people on our page, I talked about, you know, COVID all year long. We talked about, you know, those of you guys who are losing people, those of you guys who are sick. Um, but we also deal with a lot of clients who have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, much like I do, the reason I started the business. And they suffer from losses of, um, you know, miscarriages, children. We all at one point or another in our lives experience loss. And so, um, I cannot tell you how to grieve. The way that I grieve is gonna be different from the way that someone else grieves. And um, it's really interesting because, you know, I have some people in my family that, you know, they're just crying and crying and crying a lot. And for me, I was like, I'm crying, but I'm not crying as much as they are. And should I be sadder? And so it really made me think of, you know, this week's topic, you know, what what is grieving like? What should I be doing? Um, I need to be taking care of myself. But more than anything, you know, like I said, you can't, oh, and uh, my aunt has joined me. Thank you for joining me, guys. Um, she is joining me in the absence of my mother. So if I cry, y'all just know that I'm still in a very emotional place. But like I was saying before, I'm not really crying like, you know, I was before. And I'm not crying like everybody else is. And so it got me to thinking, you know, what is grieving like what should it be like this is the first time in my life i've experienced a loss like this so there's no you know map of how to grieve and so i wanted to kind of share today um with you guys some tips of some things that i've been doing and some things that we should be doing when we experience grief because more than anything you have to take care of yourself um above above all right that's what we talk about every wednesday is ways to take care of yourself and ways to take care of your skin so this week i'm going to talk about um self-care during grieving and um so i'm just going to go through a couple topics but like i said if you know if i cry or if i have to stop for a minute y'all just bear with me okay um so the first thing that i wanted to talk about is um setting specific times for yourself to sleep to cry, turn your phone off. And I give myself an hour a day, okay? During that hour, I don't let anybody bother me. I don't let work bother me. I don't let family members bother me because the thing is, it's not that they're bothering you, but everybody wants to check on you, right? Everybody wants to make sure that you're okay in your moment of grief or your moment of loss. 
but sometimes you need to take time just to break away from that. So one hour a day, I'm turning my phone off. Um, and I know at that time, if there's an emergency emergency, my husband or someone else can take a call or, you know, my staff can take a call, but one hour, everybody deserves one hour a day that, you know, you have to do whatever you need to do. If you need to cry, if you need to just read a book, if you need to just be alone without your kids or family or whatever, set aside time every day for yourself to do whatever it is that you need to do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I uh, titled my last wine and wellness entrepreneurship is hard AF because I am still the boss, you know? So even though I've taken a couple, week, couple of weeks off of wine and wellness, I couldn't just take a whole bunch of time off from work, right? Cause I've got staff members that depend on me. I've got students that depend on me. Now let me say that my staff is amazing cause they were canceling things and moving things around that I didn't even know about. But um, I couldn't just completely um, just disconnect myself. But one of the things that I, I read about as far as grief, because I'm reading just as much about like what, you know, what I should be doing to take care of myself as everybody else. Um, but one of the things that it talks about is um, when you're stressed and overwhelmed, it's okay to really lean into some of the things that you're good at or things that make you happy right so i've been taking and this may be funny but i've been taking like two or three showers and or baths a day i love water so sometimes um i have just had to like go jump in the shower more often and my husband's just been like okay we're gonna take a second or third shower okay but sometimes that's what you need to do if it's something that you need to do something that you love to do that calms you do that you know so that's one of the things that i've been doing I've actually spent a little bit more time um, just relaxing at home because typically I'm the person that's always on the go. I'm always going and going and going and pushing forward. But right now, my um, my way of grieving, you know, everybody does it differently. Like I said, a lot of people, you know, you cry, you do this, and some people get angry. For me right now, it's brain fog. I, I can't push as hard as I typically do. So right now I'm having to allow myself to ask for help. So that's one thing I'm gonna say for sure. Ask for help when you need it. You know, I can't always get up and go first thing in the morning like I normally do. So sometimes I need my husband to jump in a little bit more and, and do a little bit more of the breakfast or more of the kid drop-offs or some things that I typically, you know, just say, okay, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get this done. I haven't been able to do all those things. And it, I have to be okay with that. So as part of self-care while you're grieving, you have to be okay with realizing that you can't do everything like you normally do. Your life is not the same. My life is not the same without my mom, okay? Um, and everybody's relationships with their moms are different. I was very, very, I am very close to my mom. And I talk to my mom once a day, once every other day. So it is extremely hard to, you know, accept the fact that, you know, I can't just call her on the phone and talk to her and hear her voice. So I have had moments of just foggy brain. And like I said, that's part of my grieving process. So when things like that happen, sometimes you have to forget about your to-do list and give yourself a little bit of grace and time to heal and reset. Okay, so that's part of the self-care um, tips as well. Another one, because I pulled up a, a list and I wrote down some things that I've been doing that have helped me. Another thing that has helped me and that's been really important for me is music. Um, play music that you feel like matches your mood. There have been some times when I have literally just been like, I need a hype mix. I need something to, you know, help me, to make me excited. And then there are just times when I want to listen to something that's relaxing or something that will allow me to cry or do whatever it is I need to do, but, but play music that you feel like mirrors your mood or helps to bring out that feeling or that experience that you are experiencing. So music has definitely been um, a, helpful, a helpful tool for me, for sure. Um, and then uh, another one that it's really funny, but it says, wrap up in a warm blanket so if you guys know me uh i'm very very cold natured right i'm always cold 
And a couple months ago, I actually got a weighted blanket. So weighted blankets are really, really good for anxiety. And that weighted blanket has been my friend. I've been dragging it all over the house. So that's been something that um, has helped me a lot as well. I mean, I'm getting all kinds of love and comments. Thank you guys. I did get one that says, I mean, I want to read this. He says, I feel the same. I lost my mom four years ago. And then my dad the following year, I was so close to my mom, especially mentally. I'm just starting to try to get back to um, some part of myself. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And I will say that this is, it is definitely a process. I tell people every day that um, it's a process. It is. Um, like I said, no two people grieve the same way. So what works for me may not work for you. But I just wanted to give you guys a couple of tips to kind of, you know, help. The, the biggest thing is just doing things that are comforting for you. You know, what is it that you need? Sometimes I just have to stop and take a break. Um, sometimes it's okay. I need to stop and cry. Sometimes I need a, a hug. And I'll tell you, like, my staff, my family, like they know if I'm if I'm calling you or if I need a hug or something like just be there. Um, and I'm also going to give the people who are not grieving with people who are supporting the grieving. I'm going to give you guys a tip as well. Stop asking if I'm OK. Are you OK? I am not OK. <laughs> OK, I'm not OK. I'm not going to be OK for a little while. So don't ask me if I'm OK, because you know, the polite thing to do is like, oh yeah, I'm okay. But no, I'm not okay. I just lost my mom. So no, I'm not okay. But if you ask someone, hey, do you need anything? Is there anything I can do for you? Or simply just tell them, hey, I love you. Um, and someone else brought that to my attention. I'm a family member. She literally, every time she sees me, she's like, hey, I love you. She never asked me if I'm okay because no, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not okay. It's going to take a little while to get adjusted to the new normal, right? But if you keep asking me if I'm okay, the polite thing is going to be like, oh yeah, I'm fine. I'm not fine. I'm not okay. Don't ask. Just ask, you know, if I need anything. Just ask if there's anything you can do for me. Just tell me that you love me. Just tell me that you're here if, if I need to talk or if I need to go to lunch or do something to get my mind off of the situation. Just tell people that you're there for them that you love them, ask them if there's anything that you can do, but don't ask them if they're all right. And honestly, don't ask them how they're feeling because a lot of times we don't know how we feel. You know, like, I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm feeling weird. I'm feeling like, you know, I can't think of things right now. My brain is foggy. So you don't really know how to answer some of those questions. And so you politely just answer them as best as you can. But um, for those who, you know, are, are helping to take care of those that are grieving, just tell them you're there for them. Just tell them you love them. Don't necessarily ask them, are you okay or how are you doing? Okay, because we don't always have the right answer for that. Um, and then I guess like the last thing that I wanted to do was just um, kind of tell you guys, find something that you care about. Like, you know, whether it's plants. I, I have this beautiful plant here and I'm gonna show it to you guys when I'm ending the session. I have this beautiful plant from a friend and we've been getting so many flowers by, and I love them and I'm trying to keep them alive, but my husband calls me the plant murderer. So in order to calm myself, I'm not really going to plant things because I know that that's not my strong suit, but I'm actually like kind of tapping into calming exercises like yoga you know, or listening to soft music and it doesn't always have to be meditation, but just trying to quiet my own thoughts. So I'm, I'm tapping into different things like that and exercise does help, you know, exercise helps getting out there, moving around a little bit, getting out of my own kind of head. So um, there's just a lot of different things that you can do. I would definitely say look up a couple of articles on um on grief so that you know what process of the cycle you're in because you know we're gonna flip flop and go from step one to six to seven back to one all over again but kind of if you're familiar with the stages of grief it's easier for you to understand where you are um and then find things that are comforting to you because those those are those have been my only saving graces to be honest is um you know finding a couple of things that i like to do doing them by myself or doing them with family um spending a little bit more time with my family has helped a lot as well um so i just say 
Thank you guys once again for your support um, during this process. And um, I'm going to continue, you know, being here. And next week we're going to do skincare. We're going to talk about something fun and exciting. But I really did want to give a couple of um, self-care tips while grieving because a lot of us are out here grieving. A lot of us are hurting and we're not necessarily taking care of ourselves. Now, I will say the first week or so, like, of course, I came on here the day that my mom passed. I was I was in shock. But I came on here just to tell you guys what was going on because so many people had been praying. And then the week after that was all about me taking care of my family. I had to stay busy. I planned the memorial. I did this. I did that. But now is, is that phase where I am grieving and I am starting to feel it more. I'm starting to, you know, miss her presence here more. And so I really just wanted to come on and talk to you guys about it. Um... Oh, and then another comment, and thank you guys so much for sharing this with me. Um, I had someone else that said, I lost my mom a year ago. Music um, helped me and helped my sanity. So, though, you know, though, those tips really do help different people. So, um, as I post these, um, I'm going to post these videos, of course, on our Instagram and Facebook. But I would love for you guys to continue commenting on what helped you or if there's anything you feel like you can help other people with, I would love for you guys to continue sharing those things because like I said, at one point or another, we all lose someone, we all have some kind of loss and we need to be able to lean on each other um, in those moments of comfort, in the moments that we need comfort. So um, once again, thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you guys for being here and we're just gonna keep moving forward. We're gonna keep moving forward and um, it's hard. It's hard to be without my mom. And I'm sure that many of you guys understand that, um, especially since she, she was a single mom. So it's like I lost my mom and my dad the same day. Um, but I, I really just appreciate each and every one of you guys and your support um, and everything that you do. Um, oh, another one. Looking at old pictures of my mom really helped me. I think that's a great one. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that is a that is a great one. I actually am getting a blanket made with a couple of her pictures as well. So I think, I think that that's a great tip. Um, so once again, I just kind of want to toast. I forgot to toast earlier, but I want to toast each and every one of you guys for making it through hump day. Thank you for tuning in with me. Um, Wine and Wellness is going to be back, back to the new normal right this is a new normal for me but um we'll be back um at our normal time and we're just next week like i said going to talk about skincare and start to you know build on this new normal so i appreciate the support that you guys have been giving me each and every day y'all are definitely keeping us busy here at the spa which makes my life a little bit easier because i have a great staff so i don't have to worry about that part <laughs> But um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will be back next week, and I really appreciate all of this. And um, keep the tips going. Please continue to share what has helped you because so many of those things can help me and help others as well. So I pre appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here today. I hope that those tips helped you a little bit, and um, I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. So toast to you, and have an amazing rest of your Wednesday and rest of your week. Okay.